Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use two string functions called find and find nth. Essentially, they're two of the same functions. One allows you to find the position of a piece of text in a string, and another one allows you to find the iteration of that. So the second, the third, or the fourth version of that thing. Okay, let's get stuck in. Okay, so I'm here in Tableau. I'm just going to open up the American Superstore Sales. That's the second uh, one here in my list and it just gives us the nice data source. Now, the field we're gonna be using to test this is going to be the product name. If I just drag that here onto rows and show that to you, you'll see that it's basically just a long list of product names. If I actually just uh, sort this out uh, from A to Z, you'll see that it starts with some sort of numerical fields at the top. And as you go down, you see uh, sort of a much, much bigger list of, of items. And essentially the thing I want to try and do is find the position of the comma in each and every one of these names. Okay, so you can see that it's not in the same position each and every time. Um, if I look um, to some of these, some of these records don't even have a comma. So if you look here, you can see that this uh, particular record has a comma roughly in the same place. But if I go to another record, you'll see that because of the names are slightly different, for example, here, you'll see that it's a slightly different length. So. When we go and find this comma, we're gonna first find um, items which don't have a comma. And then we're also gonna find things with multiple commas, okay? So let's first try and find just one comma and let's use this find function. So in order to do that, you just go over here to the calculated field. And I'm just gonna type in IFFIND to find the two functions that we're interested in. Little tip I learned today, I didn't know you could actually do this until today, is if you hold a command, you can just uh, and, and scroll up and down, you can actually zoom this sort of right hand side of the of the calculation window. I didn't know that until today. It's a wonderful sort of new fact I found out just accidentally during a support call with a colleague as well. So hats off to Molly and Lorna, um, who I discovered that with. It's a little great find. But anyway, uh, the find nth is also here. So first we'll do the find function or we'll just bring in the product name. I'll just hold command whilst dragging that into the view that is also control on the windows that essentially copies the field from the row shelf into our calculation window. And if I hold command again and I just scroll up, it also increases the size here so you can see what's going on. Another tip, if you highlight the thing you want to put the function around, then double click the function tableau will put that around the function for you. Let's hit a comma because in order to write this function, you essentially need to give it the string, which is this particular item. Then if you look over here on the right hand side, you'll see that it tells you to basically tell Tableau what you're looking for. So in this case, it's actually a comma. Okay. So the way to do that is to type in a bracket. Now you can do two single brackets or two double brackets, whichever one you do, just make sure it's consistent. Okay. So I'm going to do two single brackets. I'm going to put a comma in there and we're going to call this the comma finder. So let's go comma finder. Here you go. So if I hit apply, click OK, and then I drag this onto this particular part of the field, you'll see that some of these product names are actually quite long, okay? If I really drag it out, you'll see that it actually does find uh, the comma in, in, in a sort of various positions, but the number you're getting back is slightly strange, right? Like it's saying there's 448 here, and you're probably wondering, well, that can't be 448 characters, and I'd agree with you. And that's because it's aggregating this. If you look over here on the left hand side, the actual value um, over here on the left is essentially being summed up. So in order to fix that, so we can just see what it is for this particular product name, I'm actually just gonna go in and I can select average, min or max. They're all gonna do the same thing. So if I select average, you'll actually get the correct number here. So you can see that 64 is the right number. I'm actually gonna just choose a min in this particular case just to show you that it's the same thing. The reason the min does this is also only gives you one decimal point. I think it's because of the way it's doing the math and um, the uh, rounding, I think works slightly better with the min and the max and it sort of treats it like an integer. Whereas I think with the average, there's actually some maths going on which returns a float, which is slightly different. So um, anyway, now that we've got this how we want, let me just go ahead and choose a min here. And you can see that some of these have a zero value and some of these have a uh, value in there. And that is essentially the position of the comma. So now we know that position, you can then go ahead and do things like return all the characters up until that point. So let's go ahead and use something we learned yesterday on the right and left function, which is to create another field. 
And this is what I was talking about yesterday. In a video yesterday, I said that you could essentially replace the number in the right and left function with any other calculation. So I'm going to go ahead and do exactly that. I'm now going to say uh, command drag in product name into our view. Let's make that larger. I'm going to highlight it and then I'm just going to hit right on here to get that function around that. I'm going to hit a comma here and now it's asking us for the position we'd like to use. The position in this case is going to essentially be this calculation. So I can do this. I can essentially just drag that in here like that and it essentially just brings that in. And so if I just do this and I call this right using comma finder and hit apply. Uh, you see there's an issue here. Can't mix aggregate and non-aggregate functions with this. Uh, sorry, let's try again. Can't mix aggregate and non-aggregate arguments with this function. Now, if you've watched some of our previous videos, you'll also know that the attribute function will help us fix this. So let's just go ahead here and put the ATTR around this. If you don't know why, go ahead and watch my video on the attribute function. It explains this in a lot more detail. And now you'll see the calculation is valid. And now we're ready to go hit apply. And now we can go ahead and grab that field, right, using comma finder, put that over there and click OK. Let's close this up so we can see what's exactly going on. Uh, we've used the right. I should have used the left. I could probably hear some of you uh, telling me that. So let's go ahead and actually change that. So um, let's actually replace this with the left function in here. So let's do that properly. Hit left, uh, hit apply. I'm working pretty quickly here, but so you can see sort of what's going on. And you can see here that it's returning everything, including the comma. So if I wanted to adjust that, I could then go back in here again and just reduce that by the number one. I can actually do maths in here. I can just do minus one in there because this returns a number. And so if I minus one from that, that should get rid of that. And now we have a perfect uh, sort of looking field. We've just returned text where there is a comma and we've only returned the text up until the comma, not including the comma. So that's the find function. We sort of elaborated the point a little bit. We exaggerate it. We use the right function as well as the find function to sort of show you how that works. Uh, but that is a very nice, simple string calculation that anyone can do. It's really, really simple to understand and you can start to work with it. Okay, the next one we're going to do is the find nth function. So let's go ahead and actually just look at that. Let's create another calculated field. Let's go in here and type in find and you'll see that the find nth function essentially returns the position of the nth occurrence of a string. So it's very much like our previous one, but we can actually tell it to go and find a particular one. So the second, the third or the fourth one. So let's go ahead and actually create that. This time around, I'm actually going to create a new sheet and I'm going to drag order ID onto rows to give us the um, order IDs of a particular thing. And the reason I've used this is because it has two hyphens. So I want to target the position of the second hyphen. OK, so let's go ahead and create a new calculated field. I'm going to hold command and drag in order ID. I'm going to highlight it. Then I'm just going to type in find nth. You're sort of getting a glimpse of how you start to work with Tableau now if you're sort of really comfortable. And now you'll see that I've basically got the function set up correctly. I just need to add a couple of things, uh, one comma to specify what we're looking for, and then a second comma to specify which one we're looking for. So I'm looking for the second iteration of the hyphen. OK, so let me just zoom in there so we can really sort of interrogate this here. So I'm finding the nth, which is the function we just learned. I'm using the order ID. I'm finding the hyphen and I'm finding the second hyphen. OK, so second hyphen finder. OK, so that's apply. Let's click OK. And now if we drag that in, we should. I, I dragged it into the rows. I shouldn't have done that. I should have actually dragged it onto uh, where is it gone um, onto ABC here. So we just get the number. And again, we have that issue we had before. It's aggregating it. So we'll just go ahead and choose a min. And now we have the correct number because these are all IDs. Every single one of them has exactly the same length and therefore the position is exactly the same each and every time. So there you can see the find nth function working. It's telling us that it's the eighth position in this string. OK, so that is a really, really simple function. The find function, you can use it pretty much anywhere you want. Now, as a bonus tip, I'm actually going to show you how to then do some really, really interesting things with this. There's one more function I'll show you, which is uh, I'll, I'll, I'll chuck this in as a bonus one. 
This is called the length. So if I just type in LEN, you'll see that this will essentially return the length of a piece of string. <laughs> Not a piece of string. <laughs> a data piece of string. I, I can never get my head around that. I just always, I always say that. I don't know why. But anyway, this will return the length of any text, essentially. That's the way to look at it. So if I just type in order ID, and we highlight it and then we double click the length function so it goes around it. That's all I need to do. There's nothing more to it. If I just type in length, we can hit apply, hit OK, and then drag this in into this place again and it gives us another one. So now I can see the length of the string. Don't forget it's aggregating this again. So let's go find the min. And now we have the actual length versus the full length. OK, so we have 14 and 8. So what you can then do is you can do maths like this. If I just double click in the measure values field, I can just do this. I can say, take the length and minus it from the position of the second hyphen. Okay. And that will return six. And then what can I do? I can say, uh, right. And I can use this other function, just holding command while I drag it in. And it's going to complain because something's broken. So let's 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 stop being too ambitious. There's not enough space to work there. So let's try this again. So let's say right. This is a function we had before, and I'm essentially going to try and use this. And then we're going to get an error here. Uh, right is being called with integer. Did you mean string float? Yes, I did mean string float. So what I forgot to do previously when I typed that is I forgot that I also have to basically give it a piece of text to call up. So in this case, that's the order ID. So again, I'll hold command, drag that into the view. This should clear the error, aggregate and non-aggregate. So we know what to do here, ATTR. Okay, so this is a really over-engineered calculation for something really basic. Uh, you could have just done a split function on this, but now you can start to see how I've pieced together these functions that I've taught you the last few days uh, to create something really over-engineered, but essentially, um, let's call this a right part of the order ID. Okay, let's just do that, right part of the order ID, and then put that in next to order ID, and we should just get the number. So just so we can go through the mechanics of that, I know we've done a lot there. Let me just close this again, and I'll just go through this super, super slow. So we've got our order ID field, okay? And we've got our length. Now the length, is a new function that I showed you. It finds the length of any text that you provide it. So it could be a field, it could be a paragraph, it will just find the length. The second hyphen finder finds the nth version of a particular thing. In this case, it's going to look for the second hyphen in the order ID field. What that gives us is essentially the position of the hyphen. And then what we're doing is we're taking that away from the length of the entire string to figure out how many characters from the right-hand side the string actually is. And then we're taking the right function and using that value on order ID, which is actually an attribute in this case, to find the final answer. Okay, so <laughs> completely over-engineered example there, but you can follow along, you can use Superstore Sales to do this. Um, if I've totally lost you, just, just rewind and watch it again. Trust me, you'll get it. Just go through a little bit slower. You can even play me at half the speed if you want to and you'll eventually get there. But it's these sort of functions are really, really crucial because as you just saw, you can build them up to solve very interesting problems. Let's say you've got a particular uh, piece of data where the position of something changes all the time and you need to be able to target it in the string calculation so you can do something else like replace a value or clean up a value or clean up a data issue. This is the kind of function that's really gonna help you um, out. The other way you could do this is regex, but that's uh, a function for another day, okay? So that's pretty much the video in a nutshell. If you've enjoyed this video, you know what to do. If you haven't, um, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you'd like to see instead. I say that every video and I know people put comments in and I haven't replied to all of them. I haven't made videos of everything I've replied, but eventually we'll get there. We've got to start somewhere. So yeah, thank you and I'll catch you in the next one.